time for your favorite uh, segment, Daring Abroad. And I have the Daring Abroad inside man himself, Alex Tomada, in studio with me. Alex, what do you have for us today? Now, uh, tonight I'm not the one with the story. Uh, but it is Francis Mutalaki who is sitting in for me. Right. He's been daring abroad too. Uh, he's been in Somalia uh, with the cameraman Martin Kio. Uh, they met this Kenyan who has been managing Jazeera Palace Hotel. His name is Justus Kisaulu. Right. Uh, the hotel has been attacked three times but the man is there resilient. So Mutalaki met him to just understand what makes him remain in Somalia. The last attack was in July. A, a half of the hotel uh, was brought down, no, but no, it was no. reopened recently. Right. So Mutalaki has that story, and let's uh, have a look. Mention of the name Somalia and specifically Mogadishu evokes painful memories of violence, suicide bombings and other acts of terror in the minds of many Kenyans. But there are those who are daring enough to work here. Oh, the customers are okay? There are some bottles there. Take the bottles. Meet Justice Kisaulu, the general manager of Jezira Palace, a hotel that has been bombed thrice, but that has not deterred Justice from making a contribution to rebuilding the nation. Nobody can be used to explosions and uh, even a gunshot is enough to scare a king. You know these things are very hard and rare to hear in Nairobi. But this for me it was a calling. But how did Justice find his way to Mogadishu, Somalia? This one started with uh, a visit to a friend, the owner of the business, who I met in Nairobi. Uh, he just told me he had a project and he requested me to recruit for him specific professionals to come and help him manage the hotel. So I came for a visit, I checked the property, I checked Mogadishu. Yes, there was a lot of challenges, but I made a decision to manage the hotel. It was a tough decision, he says. To get a qualified staff to run the operations, it was very, very hard. Number two, there was no clean water in Mogadishu. There was no national grid to provide electricity. There was no sewer lines running the city of Mogadishu. Compared to Kenya, one will ask, how is life here at Mogadishu? Here, you are not only a manager, but you have to keep on checking the early warnings of an attack, all threats which are facing the hotel and working on them. Otherwise, if you don't do something, you'll soon be a statistics. Life can be hard here, but taking the necessary precautions, go to the right places, being led by the right people, you can stay safe in Mogadishu. For ordinary Somalis, life is normal. Life is normal as in they can go to the market, they can go to their home, they can report to work. Life is okay, but for high profiles and also for leaders like me, you have to take caution. Jazeera Palace is one of the top posh hotels in Mogadishu. Uh, the guests we host in the hotel, they are high profile. They are either ambassadors, government dignitaries, or uh, dignitaries visiting from other countries businessmen and all these people they have one thing in common they are here to change the life the economic life social life of the somali people so this one doesn't go in well with the enemies of peace the hotel has employed five kenyans mostly departmental heads what motivates me to be honest with you is not the money it is how this hotel has changed the somali uh, the somalis in their social and economic life, and also how it has been uh, impacted in the society. Just as says he has seen Mogadishu grown to what it is today, from banks that the Somali community are now embracing to construction on new buildings, beaches that were no gone zones in the past are now busy. Barabara is on street lights. Kiangaria i barabara iko pa nje hoteli. Imeokuwa lami mzuri, ni smooth, hakuna mashimo. Ukiangalia stima, iko mzuri sikuizi. 
kiangalia shule zimejengwa wakati huo shule za serikali hazikuwepo the parting shot from justice is that everyone has a mogadishu in their lives so to speak the question is how do you make the best out of it without giving up we believe the poison that doesn't kill you will always leave you stronger the zira is more stronger it's more vibrant is ready for high profile business is ready to provide a secure environment is ready to provide excellent services is ready to keep somalia and Mogadishu as a city in the global hospitality map. Thanks to Lucky, KT News for daring abroad. Great story by Francis and Martin. Powerful interview there. And Alex, you've done many of these stories about great Kenyans daring abroad. What do they seek? to bring back the country? Um, first of all, of course, the, the experience, the, the technology transfer, transfer, skills transfer. Someone like Justice, if he comes back to Kenya, you can imagine how much experience, skills he brings back. He can work anywhere in Kenya. Remittances, they are investing back home. Inspiration, many Kenyans watch this. They feel great that Kenyans are great. They can work anywhere in the world. But it's not easy. If you heard uh, Maxwell, the athlete in right. Paris, he said, I mean, they are not plucking money from the tree. Some of them work so hard. For, for jobs sometimes uh, in, in a day, uh, the, the fact is that, I mean, you can excel anywhere. You could be in Kenya but still excel, but maybe someone got opportunity elsewhere. You don't leave your job here to say, I want to go to Paris today. Where are we yeah. getting abroad next? Um, uh, let me not reveal much, but Africa, Europe, and even Asia. Thanks, Watch Alex. my steps. Thanks, Alex. Thank Alex, you. Uh, daring abroad. We take a short break now.